Welcome, everybody, again to Sunday at 1 o'clock, Mayor's and Supervisor's Update. This is Chris Caroso, publisher of The Sentinel. We do this uh, as often as we can on Sundays at 1 o'clock. Thank you for showing up and listening whenever you listen, because this is archived and saved for you. Let's start with uh, this week's update from Mike Falk, Supervisor of the Town of Lima. Mike, take it away. Okay. Hi. Uh... The Board of Supervisors of Livingston County met with Vinny Esposito uh, on Wednesday of this past week. Uh, Vinny is the second in command for the Finger Lake Control Room uh, that is responsible for the opening uh, scenarios and strategies that go to Governor Cuomo for the Finger Lakes region. Bob Duffy was unable to attend. I, Communication uh, was stressed by Vinny uh, and by the board members, uh, especially to all of the businesses that have been left out of the opening plan. Uh, gyms, theaters, indoor concert areas, uh, mall type settings, et cetera. Um, Livingston County doesn't actually have an indoor mall, um, but it does have the other things, uh, including uh, items like the Lester Dragway uh, which has not been allowed to reopen, even though, you know, stadium seating and plenty of room. Um, one of the things that came out of it is that requirements for businesses have changed through time as the phases change. And all businesses are encouraged to read each of the phasing documents as they come out and we change phases because even if you opened in phase two, your requirements have changed in phase three or, if, or phase four quite possibly. And the example that he gave was the hair salons. When hair salons were opened in phase two, they were actually required to test every two weeks. Phase three, when that came in, it was changed from required to encouraged to test every two weeks. And so not mandatory any longer for the hair salons and a lot of other businesses are affected. So if anyone listening has a business, uh, please go out and check to see exactly what you're required because it, it, it has changed through time. Uh, he did express uh, some optimism that Livingston County would be fully open soon, but uh, soon was not quantified. And uh, that is kind of where all of it was left. Um, in other news, uh, the Lima Town Board is going to be meeting this coming Tuesday, July 7th, 6 p.m. at the Lima Town Hall. Uh, this is the first in-person meeting set up that we've done since uh, all of this began. Uh, there will be a public hearing on water rates for districts one through four. This does not include the Village of Lima water customers. Um, if you are going to come to the town board meeting that night, uh, chairs will be separated, wear your mask, and we will see you there. And have a great 4th of July. Okay. Excellent. <clears throat> well, we will say we hope you had a great 4th of July yesterday. So <laughs> or that you still right. Yeah. John Cornell, uh, Village of Lima, what's happening there? Uh, lots of things happening. We've actually had our public hearing regarding water rate hikes uh, last Tuesday evening at uh, 7 p.m. And uh, there's different, a couple different things happening. Uh, the village will be moving to an online automated billing system that will be a monthly bill. <clears throat> so that will be coming out in the fall. Uh, there are several projects Right now, I'm sure everybody's going to see right after the 4th of July, the water tower will start to be repainted. And that's one of the main reasons for the water increase or the need for that is to offset the debt service for that project. Also be meeting in public uh, for the first time the second and fourth Tuesdays in July at the town hall, 7 p.m. Uh, the second one will also have a public meeting regarding sidewalk connectivity project that's happening inside the village through a DOT grant. We would encourage everybody to come and uh, learn a little bit more about that. We also have 
Um, I just received an email today and forwarded that to you, Chris, regarding the My Livingston Life, which is a art tour of Livingston County. The Village of Lima is participating. A number of businesses downtown are participating in that. So you can uh, download a form, uh, do a scavenger hunt style uh, tour of Livingston County downtowns and the artwork and enter to win a, a gift certificate. And uh, I think we were also able to uh, renegotiate our water tower lease with AT&T. They have antennas on top of the water tower and they are going to be removed and reinstalled after the paint job. So um, we're happy to report that that is helping to offset some of those uh, the village water rates. And if you have any questions about that, they can certainly contact myself. And I think that's about it for Lima. Chris, thank you. All right, great. Thank you, John. Turning over to Jerry, the town of Rush. How are we doing there? Well, we are doing just fine, Chris. We, uh, we were delayed a little bit on our, what I would call back to normal reopening. We're still on appointment only. And that's because the vendor who has uh, put in our sneeze shields isn't fully completed yet. And we are very focused on protecting the employees and the visitors. So we don't want to open up completely until the sneeze shield project is completed. I thought that might be done this week, but it's probably not going to be till toward the end of next week. Um, we have had no incidents, which is great. Um, I just wrote a newsletter for the next publication, and uh, I cite in there that we have had no incidents, we have had no bumps in the road, and that's because our devoted workforce has been fully competent and has done everything that they should do to be safe and provide the service that we expect. Um, I'd like to also mention that we've now hired a new building inspector who will be starting on Monday the 6th. And uh, we're excited about that because we haven't had one for six months. And uh, we've the fire marshal has been filling in, but he's kind of running out of steam. And he said, please, please, please. So I said, okay. And uh, we've got that starting. Um, we don't have the number of public venues that the other towns have. You know, we've got three eateries. We're still waiting for them to open for sit down inside seating. And uh, a lot of people can't, can't wait for that because we haven't had it for a long time. Um, other than that, I think things are pretty good. We are waiting, we are starting our budgeting process and we're still waiting to see what the impact of the revenue decrease, sales tax, mortgage tax, stuff like that. Uh, we don't yet know what the full impact will be, but I remain hopeful. I think we budgeted very conservatively and I don't think we're gonna see anything that's going to really be out of sort for us and uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see and I hope people tune in by Zoom to watch the budgeting process. I will leave it at that. Okay, that's going to be some must-see TV. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Todd Kettle, <laughs> the supervisor of West Bloomfield, how are we doing there? Good, Chris. Thank you. Um, hope everyone had, had an enjoyable uh, holiday so far and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Uh, as far as West Bloomfield and um, on behalf of Ontario County, uh, we saw a little bit of an increase in the number of cases recently, primarily due to some um, younger folk activity parties over last weekend, um, not really maintaining adequate social distance, etc. So while we had been seeing you know, two or three cases across the county. It went up to seven um, kind of over last weekend. So that was a little bit of a concern. And hopefully that 
messaging has gotten out and we won't see a spike after this holiday weekend um, that people are able to uh, kind of maintain some distance. My takeaways at least are to remember about it's distance, distance, density, and duration. So making sure you're maintaining your distance from people. Um, if you can keep your visits shorter, that's even better. And um, if it's too many people, make sure you kind of take a step back and maybe think about not participating. From a town perspective, uh, we have a board meeting on Wednesday the 8th. We're intending to do that via Zoom. I've got a couple of board members that are kind of on that potentially at risk, um, depending on what the governor's orders are on Monday the 6th, whether we are going to be able to continue um, to do that. At the county level, we started our committee meetings this week on a blended fashion, a couple of folks in one of the main meeting rooms with many of the supervisors participating remotely and that works very well. So we may end up doing that on Wednesday, um, but we've published our Zoom schedule out through October. And so we've seen more participation that way and want to try to continue that and making it more available to the residents and not really asking people to come out um, on purpose just to attend a meeting if we can make it available via Zoom. Um, and like Jerry, we are still asking people to make appointments. The town hall is open, town clerk is there normal hours, but just to help minimize the flow and the number of people that might be in the main area, et cetera, we're just asking people to make appointments so we can kind of control the flow a little bit and people are uh, required to wear masks. Um, and there are still, um, the Stan Steel Agency, for example, still has a pretty high volume of masks available to give out. So if anyone is in need of masks, these are the cloth masks. They come in a five pack and they are still relatively available. Thank you. All right, thanks, Todd. Uh, next over, Rick Mill, the village of Honeyway Falls mayor. Uh, Rick, uh, how are we doing there? Uh, good overall. It's, it's nice to see everyone. I appreciate everyone's time. A um, couple of things to go over and, and obviously uh, like the other folks, a uh, little bit of a repeat. Uh, you know, our office is back to fully open um, we, with full staff. Uh, we are still taking, um, asking people to make appointments before they come in. Uh, they do have to wear masks coming into the office and um, you know, we, we're not leaving uh, the office open just to anyone walking in as of yet. Uh, we'll see, you know, as we go through the month of July, we expect that to change, but at least for a couple more weeks, I think we're gonna continue to ask for appointments. Um, our village board and ZBA meetings, uh, at least for the month of July, will indeed be moved to the uh, Menden Community Center. We are doing that because we will have live meetings. Um, anyone who wants to attend the meetings will be able to. Um, again, obviously we'll have to watch those numbers, but we do not, uh, we do not normally have that many people at our meetings. So we'll be able to spread out a little bit more in the community center. We appreciate the town of Menden letting us use that. Um, and uh, we will not be streaming the meetings live at this point in time that is subject to change, but because we're set up at the community center, um, that was going to be a challenge. We are looking for the appropriate camera, et cetera. Um, you know, Chris, you had asked a week or two ago, if we would continue to do the live stream in our meetings. And I think we're going to think about uh, more gravitate more towards doing that uh, as we move forward. We're just not set up for it yet. And, and, and the current process is just a little bit cumbersome for us. So we'll, we'll get there. Um, but that will again be the village board meeting and the ZBA meeting will both be at the community center at least in July, possibly in August. Um, our parks, uh, which have been opened are now fully open, if you will, playgrounds are open. Uh, we're cleaning them as often as we can, uh, equipment uh, during normal work hours, but people do have to understand we do not have crews on over the weekend, um, you know, so and in the evening. So, you know, we're cleaning them a couple times a day, but over weekends and in the evening, we're not. So you need to use it your own risk and uh, bring sanitizer with you. We strongly suggest that and continue to socially distance as best you can and, and wear masks. Um, we did, um, after a lot of discussion, we did start our Tuesday night concert series this week. Uh, we had a concert this past Tuesday in Harry Allen Park. Um, 
We had a number of people there. It was a nice group of people. And I am very happy to say that uh, a vast majority of the people walked in wearing masks. They sat down. Um, did they remove masks? Absolutely. But did they socially distance? Yes, they did. Um, I took a walk around the park. We, we actually set the music up to um, the band to face the back of the park, which is a bigger area, and um, instead of facing the road, and it worked out fine. And uh, that allowed people to spread themselves out. And I, I'm very confident that overall people were, you know, in their small groups, but aside from that, uh, they were six feet apart. Um, so we we're very happy with that. Um, we're going to see how that continues to work. Um, I am not uh, afraid to cancel a show if need be. Uh, people are going to have to do their best to, uh, you know, be intelligent and uh, socially distance and wear masks if they're with other people, et cetera. So we're going we're gonna to see how it goes, but it was very well received and well attended. Um, as I think Jerry had just said, we do still have uh, some masks and hand sanitizer available. If anybody needs it, I know the Rotary uh, Club, Honey Eyes Men and Rotary Club bought like a 55 gallon drum of this material. So if businesses or people need it, there's sanitizer around. And uh, I know our um, assembly member has uh, product available if anybody needs it. And the county still can get us some as well. So don't go without if you need it. Um, I did want to announce that, uh, um, regretfully, but we're happy for him, um, village trustee Jim Alfieri has resigned um, after 20 years of service to our community. Uh, he, he served on the, the planning board for a few years before becoming a village board member. Um, and um, for personal reasons, but simply because Jim is going to be moving out of the village, uh, he and Penny are going to take their next chapter in life, if you will. They'll be moving to Henrietta, actually. Uh, and we're also, though, happy to say that his one of his daughters and son-in-law have purchased, uh, I, I jokingly say, the Alfieri uh, uh, homestead. So um, Alfieri's have been in that home on Monroe Street for many, many, many years. Uh, so it's nice to see it remain in the family. So we wish Jim and Penny a great uh success in their next steps. Along that line, I'm also very happy to announce that um, I have appointed Miss, Mrs. Jackie Maine to fill Jim Alfieri's spot for the remainder of his term. So Jackie uh, was sworn in on uh, Wednesday evening and uh, this past week, and she will assume responsibility um, as a liaison to our fire department and uh, our, our um, a village board member. So we really appreciate Jackie uh, stepping up to the plate, if you will. Lastly, and this is kind of big news, some people may have seen it uh, on Facebook or uh, on LinkedIn or whatever, but uh, we're very excited uh, that Hyzon Motors, H-Y-Z-O-N Motors, they are coming to the village of Honeyway Falls. Uh, they will be moving into uh, a section that's open in Building 10 on Cambridge Street. Um, they are based out of um, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And they also are involved, uh, highly involved with fuel cell technology. Um, so the building, the Carriage Street property, is a perfect fit for them. Um, they are going to take up a 30,000 square foot area. Um, probably about 10 people coming in as we understand it, and this is, this is what I understand. I confirmed everything as far as numbers go, but we're anticipating maybe about 10 people by the end of the year, but our plans, uh, you know, at least 50 or 60 employees over the next couple of years. Um, they are working on hydrogen fuel technology. Um, and they are actually putting these in long haul trucks. So tractor trailers, mid-sized trucks, um, very successful so far, uh, they are ready to go. So they're, they're planning on capacity for producing 10,000 units per year is what's planned. Um, and uh, they'll do some fuel cell vehicle prototyping and testing. And we're just excited to have uh, not only the two businesses that we have in the Carrot Street uh, facility now, 
but uh, highs on coming. This is this is very exciting for us. All right, <clears throat> that's very exciting news. Thank you, Rick. You're very and, welcome. Um, let's turn uh, turn it over to Eileen. Eileen, the mayor of Scottsville. Eileen, what's new and happening Good there? Good afternoon. Um, things are going well in Scottsville. Things are pretty quiet. Um, one of the things, again, with the sales tax money, the decrease in Ames funding, we're looking at what is going to happen to chips. Uh, so we've been looking at our budget and right now we're looking pretty good. Like others have said, we have been very careful in this coming year's budget. And we, especially with sales, ta sales tax, we have usually underestimated sales tax. So we are, and we have some, luckily, or good for them, we had some retirements this past year in employees, which saved us some money. So we think we'll be able to ride out some of the, some of the loss in revenue. So we're ho hopefully that will work out fine. Um, the other things, uh, our next board meeting is July 14th. We do not know at this point, whether it's going to be an, I'm sorry, I just, something else came up on my screen. Um, at this point, we don't know whether it's going to be remote or in person. We're waiting on the information on the six from the state, but also um, we lease space in the town's municipal building. So basically we, we follow whatever the town is doing. And I haven't heard yet whether they're going to uh, in-person meetings or not. Right now, uh, we are following along on a daily basis with appointments only. It seems to have been working very well. Anybody who needs to get to the office has been able to. Uh, taxes have been coming in, a lot of mail-in uh, tax checks, and then we've had a few people who have made appointments to bring their tax payments in. The North Road project, the Monroe County DOT has started the North Road project, which is they're going, they're redoing all of North Road between the light at Scottsville Road to uh, the Scottsville Chilai Road by the high school. That whole section of North Road will be redone. They've started work this week and it's going to cause delays along that road just to warn everybody that if you come by North Road, in the especially in the mornings and afternoons, be ready for delays. And we just wanna remind everybody that the speed limit in Scottsville in the village proper is 30 miles an hour. And I, we are sure there are going to be some people that are going to, going to detour around North Road. And even, uh, even though North Road is 30 miles an hour, we have people who go a little faster. Um, please remember, you are in the village. Please drive carefully obey the signs, obey the pedestrian crossings, and remember that the speed limit is 30 miles an hour in the village, because we, we're sure we're gonna have people coming through the village proper in trying to avoid North Road. Uh, the, our parks, um, Catawagas has basically been available because we have a lot of fishermen, uh, kayakers that are using the creek. So it's pretty much social distanced. We have a new sign up at Catawagas Park with the rules and regulations for the park, um, along with signs uh, during the, the COVID uh, pandemic that about keeping socially distanced, wearing masks, et cetera. Uh, at Kanawagas, please remember too that the state is there working on the Greenway. We have a lots, of, lots of projects going on in Scottsville this summer. Um, at Johnson Park, there is a small playground there which is open to the public again. Please remember we try to keep it routinely cleaned, but you're, you know, it's at your own risk. Bring your hand sanitizer. Uh, you know. 
bring masks in case, socially distance. We have signs up reminding people to do that. Right now, there are no um, adult sports down there. We often have volleyball uh, during the summer. But right now, that we can see no way where you can socially distance and play volleyball. So um, right now, those things are not happening. Uh, youth practices, they say youth sports can go on. As far as I know, there's, there might be some baseball things, but mostly it's just some uh, pickup practices. If kids are available to come, they can come and they can practice with the coach. And uh, the main thing I want to talk about is Wheatland Recreation. I'm, put, I'm discussing it here because it involves a lot of Scottsville people and the town and also the town of Wheatland. Wheatland, Wheatland Recreation has decided to do a weekly summer camp. So you will sign up for a week and it's limited in numbers. There will be five weekly sessions during the summer, starting July 6th and continuing through August 7th. You can sign up for them um, online at the town of Wheatland. You can get, get recre recreation at townofwheatland.org and can get the information there. Um, Chris, if you like, I can just forward the information to you with the cell numbers, the office numbers, who to contact. All the paperwork and everything is online. You, they are also having some registration times, I believe. The documents though are on the website and it will be, you have until I think this Thursday today, is time for residents of the town and village to sign up. After that, with space available, non-residents can sign up starting tomorrow. And I think the limit each day is 75 children and they have activities planned. It will not be held at Johnson Park. It will be held at the high school. So please go on to the website at the town and you can get more information about that, plus the forms for signing up and registering your child. Again, you can sign up for one week, two weeks, how, you know, all five weeks if you like. But they will be, um, you know, one week sessions. So you can just do one week and then be finished for the summer if you like. So they have all sorts of games, crafts, athletics, things scheduled. They will have enough counselors to do small groups and keep everybody safe, happy, and enjoying the summer. So that's basically our news. All right. Thank you, Eileen. Yes, and definitely uh, email me that information. And I will. I'll do that right after this. For clarification, people can sign up since this is this airs on Sunday. They can begin signing up as soon as they yeah. want. Non-residents can sign up starting tomorrow. Yeah, well, tomorrow's Friday, so that would have been two days ago when people see this. Yeah, uh, so it will right, start so, on Monday. Yep. Anybody else uh, remember or think of anything that they might have left out that they want to add? Jerry, you're might your, your uh, just hope everybody has a great Fourth of July holiday. I I uh, would like to say I hope everyone enjoyed enjoyed the Sky Coaster program on July fourth. That's been put together by the Monroe County Supervisors, or it was put together by them, and I hope everybody enjoyed the virtual. Ah, the virtual show. And okay. I'm sure that's what he said. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have anything? Happy Fourth of July. Yeah, the everyone, offices in the offices in Scottsville will be closed on Monday. Ah, okay. The sixth. Okay. We're that's their fourth of July holiday day. Okay. Great. 
Well, with that, we want to, again, wish everyone uh, a happy 4th of July weekend. Hope they had an enjoyable 4th and uh, an enjoyable rest of the weekend. And we'll see you next time on the Mayor's and Supervisor's Report. Bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.